In this video, we're going to be talking about the flat band voltage of the MOS capacitor. So, in a previous video, we looked at the MOS capacitor in equilibrium, and I said that um, here's the physical structure, and I said that this is what your semiconductor uh, band diagram looks like. Um, but I gave the disclaimer that this is not what actually happens. This is not what it looks like in real life. And so uh, we actually need to do something in order to make the bands um, be flat like this. And by flat, I mean that the conduction band stays at the same energy all throughout the semiconductor. Same thing for the valence band. The reason why that this does not happen in a real MOS capacitor is because I can have charge that exists at this oxide semiconductor interface. I can have charge that exists at the gate uh, or the metal um, oxide interface. And because of that charge, that can cause my bands to bend in my semiconductor. But I don't want the bands to bend. I want this to be flat band, where these bands are completely flat. I can get that to occur. It's just not at equilibrium or with no applied voltage uh, on the MOS capacitor. Okay, so this is what I want to achieve. I want to have my, my bands in my semiconductor flat. And this is what happens in, in a real MOS capacitor. I can get these bands to be flat, but note, if these bands are flat, I have a separation between the Fermi level in the metal and the Fermi level in the semiconductor. And that separation is equal to VFB, which is uh, defined as the flat band voltage. So that's the voltage that I need to apply to this structure in order to get the semiconductor uh, conduction and valence bands to be flat. The reason why I need to apply a voltage is because I need to uh, counteract the effect of those charges at the uh, oxide semiconductor or the uh, oxide metal interface. So let's look at that. So here's our, our um, charge distribution, uh, sorry, our, our energy band diagram in flat band. Here's the charge distribution in flat band now. And so we're representing some, some stored charge in the oxide here and maybe some charge at the, at the metal oxide interface as well. So to counteract that, we will apply some voltage to the gate of the MOS capacitor. So that's VG for V gate. And that will be equal to the flat band voltage. Now the flat band voltage will be equal to the metal semiconductor work function difference. And it's going to depend upon uh, QSS prime, which is the, the amount of stored charge in the oxide. So once I know all of that, I can figure out how much voltage I need to apply to get my bands to be flat. Your book goes through an example of this. Um, they use a silicon MOS capacitor with a silicon dioxide uh, insulator and uh, N plus polysilicon for the middle. The, the P-type semiconductor is doped um, with an acceptor doping concentration of 10 to the 16th uh, atoms per cubic centimeter and an oxide thickness of 20 nanometers and the uh, stored charge at the oxide interface is 5 times 10 to the 10th charges per centimeter squared. So these are all you know reasonable values and if you do that calculation or you, you look at example 10.3 because they, they show you how to do the calculation the flat band voltage is about negative 1.2 volts. So by applying that voltage to the gate, you can get this flat band structure as shown here. 